Welcome back. In Sports Now, PNG Sports Foundation Executive Director Peter Chamalili Jr. today signed his four year contract. The signing took place at the Government House today, together with other four departmental heads, including Government Chief Secretary Ambassador Isaac Lupari. Paul Tomic Jr. reports. Peter Chamalili Jr. has been in office for two years as the executive director of the PNG Sports Foundation since 2014. The National Executive Council made his appointment, resulting in him signing the contract today. Minister for Sports Justin Tuchenko spoke highly about Mr. Chamalili Jr.'s role with the foundation. Peter is a new generation of uh, Papua New Guineans that are coming up, taking over uh, very um, highly responsible roles. Um, in these in different organizations and I really appreciate um, the government and NEC and especially the Prime Minister's support in supporting my endeavor to promote Papua New Guineans at, at, at this highest level so otherwise for me um, it's uh, been a, it's a great day and we look forward to continue working with the new CEO uh, Peter Samalila Jr for the benefit of sport NBC National Sports caught up with Peter Samalili Jr. after he signed the contract today. I have a very good government that is around me that believes in young Papua New Guineans uh, that will help elevate and accelerate the development of this country. I have a good minister that uh, continues to give me extra confidence and support that I need to deliver and, and, and implement our plans going forward. Uh, into the future. He said right now sports is at the point where it's really exciting and a lot of good things are happening. Um, there's a famous question that <laughs> when we're running the Pacific Games is um, what keeps you up at night? And the question would be that what keeps me up at night as a CEO for Sports and Foundation is really we, the sport, you know, sport has really been a an entity which continues to shape and drive the way this country is developing. The landscape of this country is being shaped through sports. Witnessing him signing his contract was his friend's mom Judith Samalili, who flew into Port Mosby from Buka. Paul Tomic Jr., NBC National Sports, Port Mosby. Papua New Guinea born and top boxer, Muay Thai and martial arts fighter Adrian Pang is now set for his big fight in Singapore next week. He is supported by the PNG Sports Foundation through the Sports Enhancement Program through the Ministry of Sports. The foundation through the ministry has supported Pang with 50,000 kina for his fight in Singapore. Again, Paul Tomic Jr. reports. Adrian Pang is the younger brother to James Pang, who both were born and raised in Kokopo, East New Britain province. Born in PNG, he is making name overseas in the sport of boxing, Muay Thai and martial arts. He's able now to be on contract, he's able now to make a career, a paid career out of what he does. So this is a great example of what can be achieved if you really put your mind to something and you dedicate your life to a sport. PNG Sports Foundation Executive Director Peter Semalili Jr. said Adrian Pang has been traveling the world promoting Papua New Guinea through sport. And this morning is a significant moment where our minister has, uh, has put in his hands up to recognize the efforts of what Adrian has done for our country. It's a different sport, but it's a sport that uh, Adrian is uh, looking forward to coming and making it uh, a, 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 a sport that can be loved and managed properly within the country. Peng and his family are no stranger to PNG. Born and raised in PNG, he went schooling in Australia, growing up with his elder brother, James Peng. Peng said he has fought for 16 years representing Papua New Guinea in martial arts. He campaigns for violence against women and children in PNG. A lot of women that even don't compete, they, they get a lot of strength from martial art training, a lot of discipline and 
a lot of self-confidence and not fake confidence, you know, so they, they can stand up for themselves and, uh, you know, we do promote, uh, non, we're not into domestic violence, so men hitting women is a big, big no. Uh, he said PNG has talented people who are very athletic with the right training and coaching will make them become champions. Adrian Pang will be fighting in Singapore against one of the Golden Boys, Eddie Neng, on November 11th. He is now contracted to one FC based in Singapore. Yes, 100%. You know, my father is a big businessman here in Papua New Guinea and he wants to help me. We want to set up a gym here, like a world-class gym, not just a small gym. I want to teach all the people, you know, and then I believe 100% we can find champions in this country. Paul Tamik Jr., NBC National Sports, Port Mosby. The AFL competition in the nation's capital continues with many exciting matches. Over the weekend, the A Reserve team and women's matches drew a good crowd at the Colts ground despite the hot sunny weather. Paul Tamik Jr. with this report. The Isilon AFL Port Moresby Premiership competition entered its third round over the weekend with many good matches. Despite the hot, windy conditions, these A Reserve men's team match between the Oil Min Gordon's Kokofa and Bomana Cats attracted a good crowd. At halftime, the boys from Gordon's were ahead with the scores 28 points to 6. The last two quarters saw Bomana Cats give their all, but the Kokofas capitalized, adding a behind to streak ahead. The Cats only scored a behind to trail 29 points to 7. Poor defense by the Cats saw the Kokofas scoring another goal to move ahead 35 points to 7. In the last quarter, the Bomana boys came good with a goal to put the score at 13 points to 35 at full time. The Kokofas said they were happy with their good performance and win. In the women's division, Oilmen Gordon's Kokofa could not match the speed and might of the concept Koboni. Koboni proved too strong, dominating the match from start to finish. The final score saw the Koboni girls 39 defeating the Kokofas 12 points. I'd like to ask the, you know, all the women out there, the girls out there, you know, playing other codes and stuff, if they could come in and, uh, uh, you know, play around, you know, come and have a game. And uh, we're hopefully trying to increase the number of the women's teams next year. Paul Tomic Jr., NBC National Sports, Port Mosby. League Long Life is conducting special sessions for persons with disabilities from the Callan Special Education Resource Centre at the St. Paul's Parish Church Grounds in Gerehu. The session is part of the League Long Life Inclusive Day program, which expands the reach of the program beyond primary schools to other community organisations. Neil Alamai with this report. The day's rugby league related activities were led and conducted by staff from NRL. The activities were planned for the day with an emphasis on the needs of participants of all abilities. Within these activities, key messages to the students of the importance of education and having respect for self and others. Each schooling term, NRL's development officers work with teachers to deliver League Belong Life activities to girls and boys. These activities are both on field and in classroom and are non-contact and non-competitive. League Belong Life is creating new opportunities for students with disabilities to participate in rugby league activities, promoting themselves of inclusiveness and togetherness. The program provides participants with their first real interaction with rugby league. Neil Alemai, NBC National Sports, Port Mosby. The 2016 43rd National Volleyball Championships got underway yesterday at the Tarama Aquatic Indoor Centre in Port Mosby. Males and females teams from centres nationwide are participating in this tournament. Paul Tomic Jr. reports. It's been a year since Port Mosby last hosted the championships. Last year's staging of the Pacific Games forced the 40th Championships to be moved to this year. 
President of the PNG Volleyball Federation, Bernard Alu, said he is happy that many associations are attending, especially in the Under-21 division. We are quite excited about the whole event uh, with the Under-21s uh, today for the next three days and followed by the Open. So it's been a huge res uh, what response from the associations. And we are quite able to see so many young uh, up-and-coming players going to take part this year and, and there will be so much uh, talent going to be exposed out. And it's good for our, our selectors who are currently uh, doing some selection for our national team. So it's good to see uh, most of our young athletes uh, taking the court today. Centers not taking part are Hyun Golf, Alotao Juniors and Kyunga, who pulled out at the 11th hour due to the death in one of its players. Alu says he is happy that despite not sending its junior team, Alotau is still being represented by its senior team. The National Volleyball Championships will be staged over the next five to six days at the Tauroma Aquatic Centre. The under-21s volleyed off today and will end their matches on Wednesday. The open men's and women's volley off on Wednesday with the finals to be held over the weekend. In the PNGVF, uh, I think last year, within the Oster National Championship after the Pacific Games, uh, apparently uh, most of our players, athletes, were all involved in the Pacific Games. And because of the intense training uh, they've gone through, we, we, we thought not to uh, set the, the annual uh, uh, the, the National Championship. Paul Tomic Jr., NBC National Sports, Port Mosby. Maintaining his halves combination this season was one of SPPNG Hunters coach Michael Marum's challenges after the departure of Israel Eliab, calling in Watson Boas to pair up alongside his brother Ase and Wartovo Puara Jr. has been a smooth transition for the trio. Marum has relied heavily in both men to guide the play in the halves this season. Skola Sengi reports. The SPPNG Hunters halves combination was shaken up following the departure of now London Broncos 5'8", Israel Eliab, early this year. However, for senior players Ase Boas and Wartovo Puara Jr., it was a challenge well accepted. It's been really good because we've been playing together in our local club coming out of the Gurias and I left him and then he followed me over again so it's nothing new between us. We've been playing together since we were small up and yeah, I've been excited playing up that level again. So. Coach Michael Marum has relied heavily on the experience of both men throughout the season. Injury has been a setback, nevertheless, both men have grown as senior players among a young crop of players. With the experience that I have, I try to uh, bring it down to the boys that are coming up, even the senior boys too, but they haven't been to that level that I've been to, so whatever I learned, uh, in, that, uh, in that level, I try to come down to the boys and show them what is right to do and what is not right. and yeah, try to be a role model, not really talking too much, but in actions. But coming back to the half, like, I think the coach has still the, the, uh, mature enough. I, I, I've mature in the, in, in the rugby, so that's why he suits me back to the half pack. And yeah, I think it's, it's a good good thing for me to like look into the, the person that I'm playing and Walk from there and move forward there. Next year, they join over a handful of players who have been part of the team since its take two. Next year, they will join over a handful of players who have been part of the team since its inception into the Intra Super Cup in 2014. Skola Sengi, NBC National Sports, Put Mosby. The participation of Special Olympics Papua New Guinea officials at the third national sports conference in Port Moresby has been commended by Chairperson and National Sports Institute Director Janet Kimots. Kimots expressed satisfaction, calling for sports to be inclusive. Paul Tamik Jr. reports. Special Olympic Papua New Guinea officials were part of the third national sports conference held at the Sejon Guys Indoor Stadium in Port Moresby. Following their participation, Chairperson and National Sports Institute Director Janet Gimots expressed satisfaction after their presentation at the conclusion of the conference last weekend. Speaking to NBC National Sports, Gimots said sports should be inclusive. 
Not many people in the sporting fraternity also appreciate um, um, ability sport and um, being inclusive in the programs that they run. So it's a really good thing and um, I think they should get the equal amount of support that um, is given to other sports, to the normal um, the, uh, the, uh, pe uh, people without um, disabilities. So it's really good. I'm, I'm, I'm really happy that um, um, with all that is coming up, um, ability sport um, is already a part of the PNG Sports Foundation. She said they need to stress more on the national federations so the federations can be able to include ability sport and programs. She was also happy that the conference was attended by other international guests including the president of the Pacific Games Council, Vidya Lakan. Pacific Games Council here is a guest speaker is 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 it's really good. Huh? It's really good for sport in PNG, and he stressed a few things that um, PNG PNG um, is supposed to do or can do to you know to to keep advancing, to keep improving, and keep um, um, reaching for the the good results out in the international scene. Paul Tomic Jr., NBC National Sports, Port Moresby. And that's all from sports. Back to you now, Jerry. Thank you, James. Stay with us, we'll return after the break with the finance news.